Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. My name is T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley. And this is your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. Happy October, everybody. Happy spooky season. Although it felt like summer this week, so... it's not really... (laughs) (laughs) You just had the AC on. Although I will say, these are very cute additions to the home. For those who cannot see, (gasps) there are little woven pumpkins. Aren't they cute? They're adorable. Yeah. Did you make them yourself? No. (laughs) Which I feel bad saying that because I'm supporting capitalism. You sure are. They're from CVS, not sponsored. Don't drag me. Oh, wow. I know. Well... I needed a little joy. They're adorable. Yeah, I saw them and I was like, you're coming home with me. (laughs) I like minimalism. (laughs) You say you like minimalism and then there's like a whole shrine behind me of like pop legends and icons. Yeah, but it's organized. (laughs) (laughs) Minimalism. (laughs) It's organized. Themed. Yes, there's a, a feng shui to it. Yeah. For sure. That My desk is my Watch What Happens Live clubhouse wall. Oh, inspired. Totally. Yes, yes. So if like I ever have a clubhouse one day, right? All of those things will be on display. Although background. it's probably like a copyright problem. I don't think so. Who I don't knows? think you can copyright the idea of memorabilia. True. Or maybe you can. We have to hide logos. Oh, yeah. That's true. Any well, not sponsor. <laughs> not sponsor. Anyway, everyone's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is not legalese only. No, although it often tends to turn to that. Yeah. Well, speaking of, get a good lawyer. <laughs> get a good lawyer. <laughs> this is called Legends Only. <laughs> she has been deemed one. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have a fun story for all of you this week. We sure do. Uh, maybe. Maybe you know this artist, maybe you don't. The mother of a football player seems to not no. know her at all. Taylor Swift is making headlines left and right for her now two-time appearance at the Kansas City Chiefs games in support of Travis Kelsey. And the second time around, they were playing the New York Jets. Also, I can I just point out how disgusting it is that I know all these details off the top of my head? We have no choice. 33-year-old Kansas City Chiefs tight end, Travis Kelsey. I didn't know those words. They weren't in the Bible. But now I do. Anyway. What does a tight end do? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I know what the quarterback does. Yeah, they flip a quarter. And then the tight end, I think, uh, has the best ass on the team. Oh, work. (laughs) Uh, I, I can't. Whenever I hear tight end, I become very unserious. Like I, I don't know what they do, but it seems uh... I would be a pancake end. <laughs> I played football. A little, little soothe the cakes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. So the second time that Taylor appeared at at our very own MetLife Stadium, hop, skip, and a jump away, there arose a conspiracy theory about that appearance, which. If it was anyone else, I'd say you're crazy. I kind of, in my own personal opinion, <laughs> believe it. <laughs> well, uh, if you don't know, we've mentioned her before. Molly McPherson, the TikTok PR uh, crisis coordinator. You've Have you watched her? Influencer, yeah, yeah. yeah. She talks through what may or may not be happening with a celebrity's moves and whether or not there's an ulterior motive at play. She pointed out that Taylor attending a game with the Jets and getting so much press about the Jets might be pushing down the Google results about her carbon emissions from her (laughs) private jets. Vulture wrote about this. Yes, Vulture wrote about this. I believe it. I think it certainly doesn't hurt. Do you know the Walt Disney story? Like what it's doing to the earth. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we're kind of like at the point of no return. Oh, for sure. So it's like, does it really matter? Let's expedite this. You know what they need to do? Someone out there that knows science, I have an idea. You have to invent like little solar panels that can like make ice. I, th- I don't know how, but like. Well, can't they run a freezer? Well, yeah, but like <laughs> something that we could put in the polar caps to like help freeze them. You know, I don't. Hot as ice. I'll stick to making memes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, like there's something. Yeah. 
I was also thinking too in my apartment because it was fucking hot again and I was like, I'm over this. Mm -hmm. What if they built like a shaded thing that was made out of solar panels that could then power our building and prevent my apartment from getting to 90 degrees in the first week of October? Somebody smarter than me could explain, but I think it's like expensive or or unreasonable or something. And I think because once the building- Just like my iced coffee every morning. (laughs) Which we'll get to somebody's opinion of of the Duncan ice. Oh yes, coffee we will be discussing in a moment the ice more spice ices special. and spices. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Weigh in. Let us know. By the way, we are on Discord and we are on Patreon. Give us your comments on there. We want to know if you think that this is a viable conspiracy theory. Yeah. Do you believe that Miss Swift was pushing down those that SEO search for Taylor and Jets? And if you don't know what SEO means, it Mm. means search engine optimization, Yeah, which basically means when you go to search Mm -hmm. what pops up on Google or Bing or Yahoo or AOL. Big week for Bing. We'll get to that soon. I believe this. Have you heard the conspiracy theory about Walt Disney? I've heard many, but which one? The Frozen one. Oh, oh, because Allegedly, mm. Walt Disney, like the guy who made Disney, that's him. So allegedly, he froze himself. Mm-hmm. And cryogenics, yeah, expects to be like thought out, yeah, cooked medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> so the theory is that Disney made Frozen, so that when you search Frozen <laughs> and Disney, it hides that story, and you just see Elsa. Maybe I believe it. What do we need to do in order to to push down our SEO results? What what kind of things do we have to do? Let's see. I don't know. Mine's pretty great, actually. Yours should be like. You're going to create a new um, recycling program called Chucky It Out. <laughs> I don't go by Chucky on SEO, though. That's an inside no, everyone's going to search T. Kyle plus Chucky. No. <laughs> I thought about Chucky as an artist name. I think there is a DJ Chucky. There is. Yeah. That will SEO. So I was like, no, get, we can't do that. Get his ass. And also, um, it's like when drag queens go on Drag Race and they have to change their name because of... Jan Sport. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, I learn... Yeah. I learned from all the girls. <laughs> so we're just going with T. Kyle, which is like, you know. That's fine. But yeah, I believe this uh, theory. I I wouldn't put it past her. I'll say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who you can't put something past, seemingly, is Miss New Queen of Pop, Donna Kelsey. Donna Kels. She sat in the booth for the second time. This time, did you see with Jake of State Farm commercials? Yeah, which that seemed sponsored. I read the Variety article, all about, or THR, or Variety, or Deadline, one of them, about the making of that moment. It involved Ryan Reynolds' production company, who was also in the booth, deciding to capture the viral moment of the week before with Taylor being there. He knew that Mama Kels- Kelsey was attending the brothers game, Jason, the Eagles guy, and he knew all eyes would be on her for who's sitting with her this time. So he called up State Farm... They flew him in there. Then they called up Mama Kelsey and the Kelsey family to make sure they were cool with it. And then they called up Taylor to make sure that she wasn't offended and thought that it was like a a mean joke or something. And she thought it was funny. So like all of these powers combined flew this man, the actor, to sit with her for a, a split second viral moment that inevitably, you know, it went big on social media and did more free promo for them. But it was like, a whole thing Thursday, Friday, Saturday leading up to this game. It's it's exhausting. Enough. Exhausting. This is where it gets enough. <laughs> this is enough. Unless you're going to put an Addison Ray EP in her hand. In her hand next time. Cut it out. Exactly. <laughs> enough. <laughs> Seemingly mustard will be next week. <laughs> um, If Donna holds up AR1, she I'm going should. to every football game from now on. So NFL. You want to compare discographies? <laughs> yes, she should. But. What I think is like not nearly viral enough, even though it, people have seen it, is she did a interview with Hoda. Mama Kelsey did. Mama Kelsey, yes. This is Travis Kelsey's mom, by the yes, way. Yes, is Mama Kelsey? Yes, per- perhaps future uh, mother-in-law. But oh, I don't know about I'm after thinking this. Not after this. <laughs> so maybe we'll include the clip because it's like five seconds. But basically, they're like, "Well, so what?" What was it like? For Why was she on the Today Show? They were interviewing her about the experience, I think. Oh, like... Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And 
when asked how it was, she said it was okay. <laughs> what was she like? What was yeah. it? I mean, you, so you got to know her a little bit. Got to see the couple games. How was it? It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both we both met her, and she's we've always sort of just been delighted yeah. by her way. Yeah. 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 Did you did did Travis say mom? And then they they were left dangling and they were like, well, yeah, every, she, every time she comes around here, Get a good lawyer. she's got a great demeanor and we just love to have her. Oh, they were scrambling. And to that, she sort of shrugs, looks around and rolls her eyes. There are like two camps of thought. One pe- some people think that she's being rude or or shady, which I want I want to believe. Then there's the other that is like she probably has very strict instructions from Travis not to say or or disclose anything about Taylor. So she could just be like being playful and sarcastic. But I choose to believe that. She, yeah, I believe she, the first. <laughs> me too. I don't know. It's just funnier that way. <laughs> it is. It was okay. <laughs> so, well, well, I guess or we'll she's see. just not media trained to like divert the question. Maybe, you know, because it would have been like, we had a lovely time and it was so great seeing my son. Right. He did amazing. Like switching it off of. I, I would. <laughs> yeah. It is surprising that even if she can't say anything, you wouldn't still just be like, Oh, it was such a great time. Or just not go. <laughs> <laughs> or just not show up for a yeah. medium post. Yeah. So hmm. interesting. All I know is that clearly everyone involved is, I think, benefiting from this. He's getting tons of his commercials played. She's getting tons of promo. And then the report came out in the New York Post that the NFL, and some people did speculate this was happening, are hardcore courting her. And they played Era's tour film, concert film ads for free for her they played it at least twice during two of the game pre-game shows which usually can cost up to a million dollars they played for free for her they're really trying to get her for the super bowl exactly. next year that's they, what this is they, they're trying to get her for the super bowl they're loving the attention and they want to get her for it because at this point they need to beg i feel because she doesn't need to do it at all because she can fill all the stadiums as a legend once said naomi campbell Never rest on your laurels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is pretty crazy. At least she got like some serious finan- free promo during. I mean, we never l- like, pay attention to this, obviously. I know some of our listeners do, in fact, watch football. Few and far between, I'm sure. But it is always the highest watched thing of the week on the TV ratings and even I though- used to in college because my friends did. Oh, yeah, that was my first um, head injury. It was the day after <laughs> the Super Bowl that the Giants won. Yeah, that one day. Um, oh, that sounded shady. <laughs> that sounded- um, there was a year that the Giants won, uh-huh. and we celebrated. Went way too hard, and then the next morning was when I fainted in college and cracked my head open on the floor and was in a pool of my own. Yeah, that is. The straightest thing you've ever done. I know. You fainted because of a football game Literally. victory. Oh my God. I know. Can you believe it? I, can't, I actually can't. Yeah. Whoa. And then as I was getting carried out on the stretcher, yeah. everyone was screaming, Brittany, Brittany, because it was like the same year. So bad. Oh, that is so bad. Yeah. But And you also like everyone knows that you stand. So they were just like, oh. Literally. Queen of pop. My poor friends that were like horrified by that memory. God. you Sorry really, to them. You really did a number to yourself. Oh. And continue. Yeah, to. I still have a scar. I'm still here though. Going but down, we blame that down 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 <laughs> the giants. Down. I made a fucking shirt too like with fucking um what's it called? The I survived the giants victory. No. <laughs> this what's that paint that you puff paint? Puff paint. Yeah. I forget what my sh- shirt said though. For the game? Yes, for the Super Bowl. Oh my god. Cuz all the girls were like we want to go watch the game. It's the giants. <laughs> Fucking slay. Yeah. <laughs> it said something really gay, though. Wow. And I've never been the same. New layers are being exposed every week from yeah. you. Yeah. So <laughs> who knows? Next week, you're going to be in the box with Donna. Oh, please. She would have such a good time with you. I'm honestly. just happy to be here. You would be eating that seemingly ranch with her, and you'd be getting that those free streams. Like You'd be like <laughs> <laughs> wearing, wearing a shirt with your Xmas mix on it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have fun. You like to have fun. Mm-hmm. Well, grateful to be here. 
so th- so happy to be here. <laughs> All in all, another huge week for her, for Travis, for whatever we're calling this whole bonanza. We'll see where it ends up. Do they have a couple name yet? I believe it was Kathy Griffin. Tacey. Kathy Griffin hilariously called them trailer. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's so good. So Kathy, you better keep that Britney joke to yourself moving forward, though, by the way. She gets a little uh she gets a little wild. Yeah. I stand. Oh. Very happy to see that she's doing better. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm a stan. <sighs> My life on the D-list is fucking iconic. Yeah, is what's the deal is that she's... She owns all of it. Yeah. Is which she is like so smart. Trying to find a network for it. I remember she's been talking about like... Yeah, for streaming. Her specials yeah. and stuff. That's and she's good. gonna put her specials on YouTube. That show needs to be it's on streaming. It's so fucking good. Yeah. The one episode when she got sunburned... <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember ...really that. sticks out to me. Um... I, yeah, that was some of my first gifts that I ever made were from my life on the D list. I was going to say, like, she has very, like, a whole treasure trove of things that should be, like, mm-hmm. HD re- revived in pop culture. Yeah. Gifts and videos. There was also that one scene where they were on the double decker bus and she got hit by the branch oh, as yeah. it was going <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, That's I want to kill you. <laughs> Get in line, honey. Yeah. So, so good. So, so good. We can stop with that Britney joke. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. <clears throat> well, speaking of top tier performers. Yes. <laughs> you know, we do talk about legends only. I hope you keep on serving <laughs> cat. <laughs> okay. <Bye. laughs> Luann is back in the headlines, back as she should headlines. be. Back on the stage where she belongs. <laughs> She's preparing for this, uh, another one woman show, right? It's the holiday stretch of... Yeah, Countess Cabaret. Countess Cabaret. Which these ticket prices... Or what? Literally, this is her Renaissance tour. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go. I thought it was gonna be like seventy five bucks. No, it's like two hundred. Oh, worth every penny. I, honestly, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking, I think of, I should get a free comp ticket though for for several the, the reasons. Renaissance, okay, for literally dozens of reasons, you should be honestly <laughs> like dozens. It's insane but... you're not a, a co headliner at this point. Oh my god, Luann. <laughs> Maybe it'll it'll get up to her, but by now you absolutely should be on the the close friends list. Yeah. In any case, speaking of Renaissance tour, Luann was doing an interview where she was discussing her performance style and what to expect <laughs> for the show. <laughs> <laughs> and the headline that came out was Luann de la Seps, My performance style is definitely more Beyonce than Taylor Swift. She's got a point. <laughs> uh, where is the lie? I get the vision. I see the vision and the resemblance, the choreography. The vocal talent. Vocal Surely talent. is there. The mm-hmm. dancing. I think what her actual justification for that statement was, she said she likes the pizzazz and sparkle. Mm-hmm. And obviously Beyonce is giving you visual. Well, well, a Swifty would say, have you seen that leotard in the opening number? If you want sparkle. I, I've seen it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, stop. Hey, stop fair so I, I i get what she's saying i would also compare it to renaissance for sure same yeah i think most people would okay. she's definitely the closest to beyonce of all the housewives melissa gorga would like to have a word <laughs> with you about that comment really true i saw she i guess there's a uh, envy by melissa gorga fashion show coming up i did see that she performed to her own remix walking down the runway of on display yeah Oh my god, I'm so glad it's still alive and well. Oh, and by perform, I mean she walked down and back. That's all you need. Yeah. Ramona style. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll never forget Greggy J-Lo, Bennett. Greggy J-Lo. Bennett introducing her to the stage at Splash. <laughs> yeah. That was a blurry night, but I remember it. I have a gif of him where he's holding the on display cover and it's like gigantic printout, and he's like screaming and crying, and I'm like, me. <laughs> You're right. Actually, she does rival. Luann in the music department, but otherwise, yeah. it's a she's got this. That's my Renaissance tour versus Eras tour. Yeah, is Luann and Melissa Gorga <laughs> both coming to AMC? Yeah, <laughs> they should. <laughs> well, speaking of, we didn't. We came in just under the wire of the official announcement, but we did say that something was brewing. The announcement was coming, and so the second that the post went live, came the announcement on October 1st in Kansas City. Big year for Kansas City. She had her final show of Renaissance. It's it's where the Kelseys are from. 
I it, learned that Kansas City is not in Kansas. Yes, that's this week. That's a big. Uh, also, something new. That's for new. Me. That's new. I don't really understand that, but yeah, they need to maybe lift Ar-Kansas. it. Kansas and drop it off in Kansas. <laughs> oh, Ar- like Arkansas and Kansas. That makes no sense. If you know that vine, you know that vine. Yeah. <laughs> Any case, Renaissance tour officially coming to AMC theaters December first. Tickets are on sale now. We got the first trailer. Not sponsored. Not sponsored, but hey, Parkwood, if you'd like, I will gladly yell about this tour. Oh my God, a low screening. Would love to do a low screening. Someone found out that you can rent out the theater. You can book a private. I would love to do that, honestly. Well. Let's look into it. But in any case, the trailer came and it's giving a mixture of behind the scenes, the show, and it's looking like almost all the shows. Not almost all, but several shows at least, not just There's a Houston. Lot. So, and I wouldn't be surprised if it does touch kind of all of them at some point. Now, there was some, some people were like, Ugh, I don't really love when it goes back and forth between the show and then the behind the scenes look. Like, I'd love to see the start to finish show. I understand, but I, I, I want to see the vision. I think it'll be an art piece. And however it's presented, I will stand. But I Because the runtime is shorter than the actual... It is. Renaissance. But I would argue about that if you cut the interludes, although they were a sleigh, the live interludes were kind of long between outfit Very. changes. Yeah. So I feel like those where the interludes were is where we're going to get docu-style yeah. stuff. For sure. I still think there's more to come, though. I feel like the visuals will all be clumped together that were for the album. I think maybe even the tour will be like fully released as its own thing maybe or maybe we get that documentary of just the making of the album i think there's still even more to come from it and there's like still i'm still unclear if this is act two. Oh yeah there was some confusion about that yeah. i don't think it is act two the titles were gotten crazy also there was like different titles across all of the theaters on the urls and the websites and it was like rebirth renaissance act two the re-up remixed, remixed remastered still unclear what it's actually called but I don't think it's act two. I feel like the House of Beyonce is very tight-lipped. The House of Darion as well. Yeah. And there was that reporter a while back. I'm sorry the name is not coming to me to give you credit. But there was someone who said that two and three were music. Right. Where was It was like... I think... It was something legit too. It was like variety. she also or, said that. Yeah. So, in the credits. So, we will wait and see patiently. We are the visual, baby. But now we're getting another visual. So, it's going to be a loud theater season yeah for the for the girls who want to watch any other movie this fall and winter i would watch a movie of just (laughs) the sounds picked up in the audience during mute oh like that one tiktok where you hear the girl being like you shut the fuck you stupid bitch we're gonna get no beyonce heard that oh for sure that was so good we're gonna get videos of people like filming the mute in a theater yeah which was amazing (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's going to be... And they're definitely encouraging it. Uh, AMC, I saw like Regal Cinemas did a TikTok and they were like already giving a how to attend the Eras tour. And they were like, wear your best tour outfit, bring your friendship bracelets, prepare to dance and sing. So they're encouraging. I'll bring my church girl's bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> bring your church girl bracelets. If Beyonce sold those, they would fucking sell out. So all of you can laugh at me if you want. <laughs> I think... Everyone will bring their cowboy hats, their disco outfits. It'll be a fun time. I'm really into this, by the way. Like, I know concert tour films have existed. Katy Perry, Part of Me, Madonna, Truth or Dare. But I'm really glad in a way almost that there was maybe a moment to breathe because of the strikes to think about how can we bring people to the theater still. And so I would like this to be like a recurring thing. I don't know if people can really necessarily afford to do this unless you're that one percent um entertainer but i would love to see more shows in theaters that's i think that's cool but we'll see how this does taylor's already outsold a hundred million in pre-sale tickets wow which a lot of movies would be so happy to just hit on and that's crazy and those are people who are more dedicated at getting it ahead of time there's plenty of people who are just waiting to buy it the day of yeah so I cannot imagine what the figure is going to be for Era's tour. And if they do merch and like bundles of... Yeah. What would she make her like popcorn buckets look like? I think they're 
well, there's a drink thing, I think, which is the Eras Tour like poster with the different eras of her in different colors. I know they should create like a plastic. Mm, Don't give her the free idea. She doesn't need it. The last thing she $100 needs. $100 million. Dollars. On top of your tour gross is crazy. Yeah. And she's got almost all of 2024 touring ev- everywhere else. It's so much money. Wow. You know, there's plenty of people who either couldn't make it or maybe can't handle a stadium but can handle a theater. You know, we've got Coldplay did it. Yeah, that's true. It was like very limited. Virtual experience, basically. Yeah. And then we've got the sphere. Oh, my God. I literally want to see the experience in the sphere. Same. Could you imagine? I'm not saying that it's happening there. I'm just saying I personally would like to experience the experience inside the sphere. Erica Jane at the sphere. It's um, the same amount of seats as Madison Square Garden. That's Oh, so she could easily fill it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Erica Jane and X-Tina at the Sphere together. They're the same. Erica Jane should open for her. Absolutely. And she would allow that. She would totally allow that. You know, the Sphere is fucking adorable from the outside. Have you seen it with the faces? The little um, character. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it fell asleep. Fell asleep. And then like it watches the train go by. Mm -hmm. It gets like rattled (laughs) by it. That's so cute and probably killing us even faster than Taylor Swift's carbon emissions from her Jets. Not to be confused with the Jets game she attended. No. It still it looks so cool though. It really does. They made it a pumpkin, I think, already. Mm-hmm, the jack o' lantern. Yeah. When it's the moon, it looks so cool. <sighs> I'm still convinced it's gonna cause a ton of accidents though, because you're gonna be like, oh, the cute little fucking and then veer off the road. I'm really worried about the traffic in Las Vegas lately. Yeah. <laughs> and I will be there in a month. <gasps> oh my god i will be able to see it in person in a month you should go you should just go see you too oh, just For like the they forced me to listen to that album yeah <laughs> i would somebody was like what is it about you two that they always pop up at like really dystopian moments in pop culture like it was the itunes pre-loaded album it's this very strange like matrix sphere they're always some would say ahead of their time uh, he, honestly i don't know what bono's doing but he's there I know, I will see it. Yeah, you should go. I will. I will. Because I don't know when I'm going to Vegas again. The moment they announce experience. Mm, I don't know, though, because I saw Liberation. I saw her here. Yeah, what would it take you to get to Vegas again? Celine. Yeah. If she were to ever go back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Because I feel like Kylie will tour and come to New York, hopefully. Yeah. I feel like Katy Perry teased that she's going to tour. Uh-huh. With that one Instagram thing. By she the way, is. I know nothing. No, she, they. she's hinted hard and said in interviews. That but I see yeah. it what everyone posts. And I read between the lines. Mm. And I read between the emojis. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I see what it's you're always saying. in the emojis. Always. There's always a tease. Rihanna would get me out there. Rihanna at the Sphere. That might be the only person who get me to Vegas is Rihanna. Oh, I yeah. would see Rufus at the Sphere. I would see Kygo at the Sphere. Yeah, I'm sure that it's about to be EDM to the fuck out, the sphere. I don't know that they have a set plan for it after U2, because U2's a whole residency, so I'm yeah. not sure what they're doing after, but we'll have to see. I also can't even... I see the videos, but I can't gauge that it is Madison Square Garden-sized, because yeah, it looks so... MSG as a planetarium <laughs> turned like on an angle. Interesting. Check it out myself. Yeah. Boots on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> or Renaissance tour in the sphere. But I mean, when when the transition comes from opening act to Renaissance and that like world tunnel, uh, I mean, sends you in outer space. That would be so overwhelming in person in a sphere. Spice Girls in the sphere. <sighs> don't get me started. Anyway, don't even get me started on Vicky B this week. Oh, <laughs> Did you see that the clip, the of clip her. of her yeah, yeah, yeah. the Beckham Netflix series. She was talking about their upbringing. She's like, oh, you know, me and David, we've we've got similar working class upbringings. And David pops it out of nowhere. Don't lie. (laughs) Literally called her out. Although his voice is like, don't lie. (laughs) (laughs) His voice is always jarring. It's always like, oh, that's what he sounds like. Okay. Called her ass out. What type of car did he get you? A Rolls Royce? Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Slam store. Slam store. (laughs) Got her. Got her ass. Power of four needs one girl more. Yeah, well. But anyway, since she's too busy uh, as a fashion designer, yeah. I guess that's a perfect segue. 
into a little segment that we like to call High Fashion. <laughs> oh, so editorial. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my God, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. The Furtado Sants continues, everybody. It continues. Nelly Furtado is the star of the new Skims campaign. Yeah. Alongside another legend, yeah. Kim Cattrall. Yeah, this Best of Skims campaign combined. It was five different women. And honestly, you know, I'm not necessarily a fan, to say the least, of the Kardashian dynasty. However, this campaign was pretty cool. And to see Nelly and Kim in particular slaying it, polite golf claps in the direction of Kim K. (laughs) I would try Skims. Yeah, our friends wear it. Oh. Yeah. Do they have a men's line? Not sponsored. Yeah, I think so. I have a tank top that's uh, shapewear. I'm... Unafraid oh. to admit that. What? Is, what? Oh, I yeah. don't know. I do. It's not skims, but I don't actually. You know what it is? I don't know that it's um, gendered. Where I think I think they're like. Oh, oh my god! I'm canceled. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I am not sure, but I'm. I know that we have friends who wear. Oh no, Kim Kardashian Slay. is making men's clothes now. Okay, yeah, I definitely think there's like unisex men's whatever. We can all wear it, whatever we want. Yeah. Yeah. In any case, that campaign was great. She Kim stars in, well, they actually all star in a, a video as well. And uh, yeah. Your faves. My faves. Well, speaking of Nelly Furtado and the Furtado Sants, I do want to shout out some moments that happened this week. So Nelly Furtado performed at a festival and did a cover of John Summit's Where You Are. That's like a Mad Libs made for T. Kyle. It is literally Mad Libs for me. It's very, very niche. It's so niche. But it's entirely for you. Yeah, and she performed with Dom Dalla again. Still unclear if this is a couple. Mm. I would ship this. I know, we need like, uh, we need the New York Post to to post like a sleazy sort of like allegation that they're dating so that they have to confirm or deny or something. Yeah, let's start it right now. Yeah. I think Nelly Furtado and Dom (laughs) Dalla are dating. (laughs) I second that. Yeah. Is that not like the hottest thing though to be like, serving Kavant, Mm -hmm. you can sing, and then your man is like hot and makes bops, and then you just go and put on a cat suit and perform with him. Like, that is the dream. That is. It's so (laughs) Kavant. I see see this in your future. Um, As both people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was like, uh. It's you and your alter ego. Oh my God, me and my hologram. Yes. More on that later. I'm saving that for the after show, though, because I have some tea. Well, about Join us for egos. the after show about alter egos. Yeah. Because, you know, we like to give the girls in the after show yeah. a little deeper. We're going to expose that you are, in fact, Fred again. Stay oh, tuned. No. I <laughs> Goals, though. But also, lastly, I have a question for the listeners as well here. I need your input. Uh-oh. Is this a lot of question for the culture? <laughs> yes. Actually, though. <laughs> oh, no. So, Timbaland just announced that he's doing a remix contest for Keep Going Up. Keep on going, whatever, you know? Mm. Which you all know our opinions on that song. Yeah. So I'm on the record about how I feel. mid. (laughs) Well, yeah. But you are known to take a mess song and amp it up and make it slay. Okay, so here's my dilemma, though. My moral dilemma. Yeah. That man. That man. I feel like And when we're not talking Timbaland, we're talking Timbalake. Right. So I feel like that's an ultimate betrayal on my faves. I feel like I wouldn't touch it. Right. I I feel like it's not like so horrendous, but it's also just like, I don't, I don't want him in the cultural conversation. I'll anymore. download the stems though. I'll try, but I'm like, n- snip you out. That Oh my God. How <gasps> funny just, would that be if you just snipped him out? Uh, well, yeah, I should. Could you do just an Ellie version? Yeah. Why not? It's, it's, if you're remixing and submitting it That's to a contest, true. they either like it or they don't. Okay, I changed my opinion. Do <laughs> where, it. Where'd he go? Oh, I, do oh, it. I, I lost the file. <laughs> do it and just have the Nelly. <laughs> when and I was pe- playing with that Rihanna, when people mix, love I it out. and they and it goes popular. There was just like, oh, he's on it too. I Damn. Didn't... I just I want her like let her have her Furtado sons get away. Yeah, it's like I a know. fucking gnat. I do think this is definitely a sign that just Nelly and Timbaland music is coming soon. So yeah. You, You also might want to just wait for that. But if you do this, I say do a fully Furtado remix. That would be so funny. Because I know there's Justin Timberlake fans out there, and that's whatever. I've heard of them. Well, But I would like for Nelly Furtado to have her Cavant Tassance. Okay. 
can you possibly AI alter his vocals to be JC? <laughs> <laughs> Howie. Howie. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going up with Nelly Furtado and Howie. <laughs> oh my God. I would also like to say I was correct. I always told everyone, I said, Howie's going to age the best. He's the hottest. And I was right. I think Joey's looking good for, the, for as far as the NSYNC boys. He's truly father. Yeah. I think I said that last week too, but I, I stand by it. Because things are also heating, like there's more, and they're teasing, like will they, won't they tour? There's some, there's, they're, they're definitely keeping the conversation open. Ooh, and sync in the sphere. I will be missing. I would that. not go to it, but <laughs> that would be. But they would know, sell. But you know what specifically? What visual would be amazing? Them as the puppets oh, and having oh it dangle. We just gave like the uh, idea. Justin, like, I will best... sue you to hell. Yeah. That actually, though, that is so cool. With the curtains, oh no, man! Literally, just play that video that in the sphere. See, I love us because we will drag you to hell, but <laughs> and we then will give, give you an amazing <laughs> like, creative we will praise, <laughs> like where it's due. I feel like that's fair. We will drag you and then give you a creative proposal. <laughs> Literally, give you a free million dollar idea <laughs> yeah. in the same fucking sentence. Yes. That would actually, yeah. Well, we'll see. If and they do. it would work because Vegas is now like a family friendly destination. Yeah. So you and your girls can go shake your tits while you send the man, your husband did out. I really never thought of like everyone's going tour, tour, tour. But I do wonder if they just did a limited residency like Backstreet. That would, uh, that's right there. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. I guess we'll see. Because that would make sense. We'll see. I could see it happening. I could. Anyway. Anyway. The ideas that I have for the sphere, I could talk for five hours, you guys. (laughs) Like give me an artist's discography of music videos and then give me the visual map for that sphere i would have a fucking field day Mm -hmm. like Katy perry in the sphere what you could do with that anyway the beach ball oh right left shark Mm -hmm. i have to stop what's next (laughs) well speaking of 90s boy bands and girl groups of legend of yore are and speaking of the spice girls our beloved ginger spice Jerry Hallowell turned conservative mommy Jerry <laughs> Get Horner. Get well soon, Jerry. <laughs> Get well soon, seriously. Has been doing the rounds. She has a children's book out and she hit New York City up. I did not attend, but several friends did. They went for the signing at, I think it was Barnes & Noble. Apparently it was a five-hour experience. She talked quite a bit and then there was a long, long line. My friends got their photos with her. And yeah, she did some press. She did some interviews and then she... Very chic, of course, did Vogue Life and Looks. She looked back, and there are many when it comes to her. Gave the the story about the Union Jack dress. And, that was a good story. Yeah. And, you know, going solo, singing for then Prince Charles, all of that stuff. And that was, I felt like I was getting hints of what I remember I love about her in that interview. Yeah, I like that she wasn't looking back with embarrassed and like oh i can't believe i did that she was like no i i made this outfit yeah and this was like it was nice to hear her praising it but then at the very end i felt a very um reserved sort of answer to what she's like now she said something along the lines of like you know i've really come to discover that less is more and i don't need to be selling my body is sort of like what she said and i was like oh and that came at the exact same time i saw a clip of mel b that she was like doing an extra interview or something and she's like stop wearing white jerry <laughs> she said it to her directly they're like oh jerry's doing um a lot of promo in the u.s do you have any message for her <laughs> she goes stop wearing white oh my God. <laughs> thank you thank you for bringing this to the forefront at what point it does it become too weird i think the slay on her though like, she looks good in it, but does it have to be only? Especially for a ginger. Like, I feel like gingers, it's hard to pull off white. Maybe, but I just feel like sh- it's becoming, it's only white, though. I don't, I? That's her up? Joanne hat. It is her Joanne hat, for sure. I just, it irks me. Because she was such a vibrant, colorful character. To then go stark white is right like, to go from look, give me, literally, to conservative. Don't mommy. perceive me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. People evolve and grow and change or whatever. It's fine. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> also, a shout out to Vogue Scandinavia. Yeah, Vogue Scandinavia, I feel like we've mentioned Eight. like a few times. 
they're kind of eating up. Yeah. <laughs> Vogue and British Vogue. More like Slaydenavia. <laughs> Am I right? You are right. I don't know where Scandinavia is on map either. It's the, it's Sweden, Norway, Finland. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the land of good pop music, basically. Right? Yeah. I feel so attracted to that area. Like I want to go so badly. It's, we, you, sh- you'd be endlessly inspired, I'm sure. And I then feel you'd my like, soul being called to that. I feel like you would just like casually walk into Max Martin at a cafe, <laughs> play at my new hoary yes. Christmas pop. Yes. <laughs> Although he he does keep showing up here at Anne Juliet, and so did Ari. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. she went and saw the and met the cast. Yeah, and Max. Keeps Hopefully, she didn't around. steal that lead. <laughs> 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 there's like a full all hands on deck meeting before she comes <laughs> everybody get your wedding bands out oh. Everyone. <laughs> she's coming oh no oh yes but laureen is on the cover of vogue scandinavia i keep hearing rumblings from people in the know that she's coming and she's coming big with big new music very soon so I'm She's excited. She's a new single coming, right? Yes. Is it this week or next? I think this next week. And people whose opinion I trust seem to be suggesting that she's got really good music on the way. So I mean, when is it not really the, good? Exactly. So I still can't believe we saw her in person. That was insane. I was so gagged. She had just one. Like, uh, oh, I can't believe I saw her twice in one week. Yeah, I saw her Mighty Hoopla, and then at the edition, the edition yeah. for Ava Max. Yeah. I mean, just casually standing there up on stage with Ty Sunderland, and I was like, "I know those nails. That's fucking Loreen. Oh, so iconic. Those nails are probably hard to type on a phone, though. I don't know how people do that. I don't know either. Anyway, Good. anyway. Speaking of phones, get your phones out. Get your lighters up. <laughs> <laughs> put your sneakers on. Get your phones out. Put your sneakers on and get your lighters up. <laughs> It's time for a little tick tick oh. <laughs> tick, tick tock, tock talk. I think it's the first time we ever missed yeah, that the is. mark. Wow. Damn. Get with it. Gotta get back into it. Selena Gomez met up her. with her bestie, Michaela. Michaela. For I think it's just like a rare beauty. Event. Yeah, this was a rare know, beauty charity fundraiser of some kind. There was they were auctioning off experiences. They were it was for raising money for sure, for charity. Yeah. But Michaela documented it, and she got a side hug from Selena on stage. Mm-hmm. There was a cute video that she posted where Selena walked past her and yeah. was like, noticed her. It was cute. Selena noticed 10-3, 2023. <laughs> Michaela it to the bio. was eating on this red carpet, though. Like, yeah. her hair was giving Extina, mm. like, the voice within. Yes. You know what? If you get it, you get it. If you get it, you get it. Live in the UK cover, <laughs> which is, like, top tier. Very Jaclyn Hill. Mm-hmm. it's yeah. all inspired this entire stretch of words could kill a pilgrim well <laughs> choke <laughs> I don't know. Keep speaking gagging. of thanksgiving trailer out now featuring addison ray i'm nervous not because the movie kind of looks Wait, like a new one a new yeah trailer? there's a new like longer one extended cut but i'm not seeing a lot more of addison and that's making me very nervous that she's a real quick oh yeah she's probably the first scene <laughs> It's not looking good for her. <laughs> we all know why we're gathered here today. <laughs> clink, clink, clink. Getting stuffed. Oh, oh. God. I hope it's not like, oh, whatever. How she wants to go is how she wants to go. Oh, my God. That's so morbid. <laughs> uh. Whatever. You know my feelings about pop stars getting off in horror movies. Yeah, it's not fun to see. <laughs> but we will be watching. I don't know. Will you watch? That's, it's pretty gruesome. I don't know if you'll be able to actually... I don't know. I feel like everything I've told you guys that I've watched, you're all like, oh, you could handle Scream. You could handle this. Yeah, but this is like, oh, I don't know if you, well, let's see. You can watch the trailer, the extended. Yeah, I'll check it out. We'll see. In any case, speaking of foods. There is a video that went viral on X this week. (sighs) I'm about done. It's like not working and then it like doesn't load and then the headline thing. I actually am infuriated by the headline thing. Oh, let us tell everyone. I'm about to miss Linda. All right, you're on my number one shit list. Did you see that interview that she did on stage? Yeah, where she pretended she knew what he's. She had no idea. She had no idea what was going on. How much money does she make? Hundreds of millions. I. Oh, oh, I have. Oh. 
Don't even get me started. I Do you want to see Brad go off? I think we want to see Brad go off. on the side of my face. <laughs> it's like it's that little so... baby in The Incredibles when it lights on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Literally me. It's so transparent what they're doing. He has a vendetta against legacy media because he's a fucking scumbag and they drag him regularly with like exposés and shit and they are not very favorable of him. So he already has a vendetta against journalism and just like clicking off his fucking website. Explain to people what you mean by legacy media. So that means traditional media. So New York Times or whatever, any sort of outlet, news outlet, rather than guerrilla, like a freelance journalist who just has a feeling about things doing front-facing TikTok videos about what's really going on. Right. With no... Sourcing. Sourcing. Yeah. Yes, totally. So, and not to say there aren't issues with corporate journalism and and you know advertising and and being in the pockets of big whatever but he he's definitely always ranting against it and he's making fun of news for catching up to social media trends all the time and so his latest greatest move is to get rid of headlines on links to articles outside of twitter x and so instead you just see it the picture the lead image picture with no text and just a tiny little warm mark at the bottom left of what the website is. And it is so confusing. You just think you're scrolling past a picture. But being a entertainment journalist, it is so infuriating. It completely, I know it's going to make referrals tank even more than they are already tanking on X. Like it's already like a fourth or fifth down the list of like best referrals. Yeah, for... well, it already like dings you on the algorithm because uh, yeah. they want you to stay on the website. They don't want you to click out. Yeah, it's so transparent. They want to like confuse you to just stay on X and not click out of X. So they'll so you're scrolling by and you just think it's a photo, and they just they don't want you to go out of the platform. So that's just yet another step to do it. And I just fucking hate him so much. And that makes me want to truly leave. I I know I'm like going down with this ship every single awful redesign he's making. But yeah. In any case, uh, so that's the latest move that he's made. But and apparently they're going to get rid of engagement numbers next. Yes, so you're not going to see anything on your tweets. You won't know how many people Zeets liked, reposted, and it's like, okay, yeah, great. He's just dismantling it. In any case, there's a funny meme. On there X. is, and I'm so excited that she went viral because she's a queen. So there was a salad video from. <laughs> Just explain what a salad video is. So she's eating salad. Okay. This is at Lee Ariel Simone. Mm-hmm. Now, I would just like to say I have been following her for a few years now. Okay. She's a wellness, like, she's very positive. She's always offering up nutrition tips. And anyway, she just is, she's a good follow. And I've been following her for a long time. She talks about wellness, a detoxing, fixing your gut, healing your gut, mm-hmm. what foods to eat. It's she got me into the whole like wellness shot thing with like pepper and lemon. Yes. Anyway, I stan. So then she posted a video and was like, <laughs> Do you love your salads? Like, and it's her eating a salad, but she's like laughing and smiling and it's really funny. It's very much like those watermarked <laughs> images from stock images of yes. laughing at your salad. <laughs> yeah. So people have been like quote retweeting it and being like me lying <laughs> and like all this stuff. Me pretending the salad is delicious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then someone also posted the guys from in front of my salad. Oh, yeah. With the imagine your diet changes and your cravings change and suddenly you're at home craving a full blown salad <laughs> and these two walk in. <laughs> <laughs> really in front right of my, in my salad in front of my salad oh it's so funny it's really funny <laughs> it's so good 44 million views as of right now that's insane yeah i think she handled it well she's like laughing along with it right yeah, yeah. she's like if you're talking about a salad i've done my job I'm like yeah exactly wellness queen she's tossed a salad in front of 44 million people <laughs> that's well Speaking of in front of my salad, that was just one of the many edits that I saw float by on my timeline this week as the world discovered Bing's AI image generator. Out of control. Unfortunately, I lost many hours to this this week. I have lost the AI wars officially. I've been so adamantly against it. And then when I discovered 
that I could make Christina Aguilera burn down Joanne Trattoria. The photo <laughs> set that you posted the other day sent me into another orbit. They're really good. It is so... Do we need... Can we post them on our Instagram? Yeah, I will post for sure. Is yeah. that illegal? No, it's all AI okay. bullshit. Yeah. For entertainment purposes only. For only. Brad <laughs> entered... <laughs> Christina Aguilera, what was it, burning down Joanne's Trattoria in yes, New York City? Yes. And the images that came up are so fucking They're funny. They're so good. Her holding a microphone, staring at the burning. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I did um, rats on stripper poles and yes. Joanne's, and there was one that kind of slid. No, they, sometimes they really fucking slid. Yeah. <laughs> I've put Rita Ora in Jaws. I've put... What have I done? I've Did done you see so the many. Rita Ora one of uh, Rita Ora accepting the Guinness World Record for fastest tweet to get over 1,000 retweets, <laughs> 2014? <laughs> it's just her holding a Did Guinness. Did you see Charlie XCX and Addison Rae accepting the Grammy? Yes. Uh, Trisha Paytas accepting the Oscar. That's foreshadowing. It is. That was an AI. That was that was real. The amount, all, every Wendy Williams one is incredible. I did her arm wrestling doula peep. <laughs> <laughs> Running away from the killer. <laughs> Running away from the killer is great. Um, because of last week, I did Chloe Kardashian being stalked by a whale. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this is ignited Stan Wars again. You have Katy Perry crying, reaching for a Grammy. Um, <laughs> oh, the nun. In- the, oh. the courtroom. <laughs> the nun. T- <laughs> again, that's just factually a photo. <laughs> um out of control it's out of control and i do unfortunately get a kick out of it oh i forgot i made the one of christine angulera throwing a wine glass at peppa pig oh yep oh yeah lots of peppa pig (laughs) yep and then the discord really just lit up with ideas yeah in our halloween thread so but i i feel like because it's so obviously fake but interesting to look at and in this very limited usage i'm not as mad at it I guess. Yeah, it's like making memes. Except, like, but, yeah, I don't because they're clear. But the problem is, all and this comes with anything. It's like there's always going to be bad actors. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when I make memes in the past of like dubbed over things, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to like convince anyone mm-hmm. of like anything bad. Yeah. Like when I put Big Ange on the Time magazine cover and people believed it, there were people that I saw when you did. Um, Please rise for the national anthem, and it was Britney. Give me more. Oh. There were quote retweets that were like, "Our country has become such a fucking joke. I can't believe they did this." Yeah. It's like <laughs> oh, I'm like, "Oh wow, I'm sweetie. so flattered at my mm-hmm. audio editing." Yeah. So that one was iconic. Yeah, I that really, really did that. that really did shake up the girls. You want to? Oh, fun. Um, underneath the uh production of that, uh-huh. I actually used. I think it was like Beyonce performing the national anthem oh. at some show, and it was on YouTube, mm-hmm. and I clipped that audio. That's what it's from. And then someone clipped it from my audio and made the Iggy Azalea one. Yeah, <laughs> that was good too. Oh, I just love memes. I feel like all of this is going to ruin memes. Like they're just going to ban the internet. That could be for the best. <sighs> anyway. Um, time to live off the land again. Yeah. Get back to the, the land. Anyway. Back to me. <laughs> yeah. So that's, if you've seen some strange imagery on your internet, that's why. Yeah, we'll post these uh, Christine Aguilera ones over on our Instagram. Yes. At legendsonly underscore pod. Yeah. But speaking of other podcasts. Oh, that's right. And some of our faves. Yes. It was a fave convention. And I see that one gay. (laughs) Two this time. Two gays. Yes. Friends of the pod, guests of the pod, Sugar and Spice were on Friend of the Pod and and Fave of the Pod, Delta Works podcast, Very Delta, for a spooky ooky episode. Another top tier episode. Yeah, it really. Top tier. Truly. So fun. And you could tell she was delighted by them. Mm-hmm. Very engaged. Very entertaining. What I really loved about this episode is at the top of the show, <laughs> they kept in all of the takes yes. of Delta messing up her. Um... I love that because... <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Besides her just being funny, the show is actually incredibly smart because it mirrors public broadcasting and the DIY amateur hour sort of vibe of that where there's awkward dead silence, there's m- multiple takes of like public broadcasting. It's like actually genius. Like, they do that on purpose. Yeah. So it's so done 
it's done so well. Yeah, totally. But Did you ever watch that back in the day? Yeah. One of my, um, I think it was CCD or like elementary school teachers, she had... I remember there was like a public service TV show. She had a show. And she was, and I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God. I was like, I, that's like my CCD teacher. We she should really pivot to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like an, a half hour. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's totally what the vibe is. You either get it or you don't. And it's brilliant. She went, she went viral as well. There was a moment, did you see this, where she confronted a drunk woman at her <gasps> show? Yes. And it was like on the verge of, dragging her within an inch of her life i was like my yeah. breath i was like <gasps> and then she decided to be mother yeah <laughs> there was like a perfect assessment of it that i had scrolled by that was just like she could have chosen violence but instead she decided oh this woman needs a mother yeah <laughs> it's really is that recent i think so i think so yeah 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 god delta is so great so sugar and spice were right. on very delta mm-hmm and it was so funny and so entertaining. <laughs> yep. And they tried the ice spice Dunkin' well, drink. You know, we talked about this earlier. We teased this. Um, it's thumbs down yeah. for Miss <laughs> Delta Work, who said, and I, I refuse to believe this, but I believe her, that it's not sweet. Or I doesn't, can see that. Then she dragged their donuts. She did drag the donuts. And they need to be dragged, I will yeah. say. I'm, an, I'm Boston Cream only with them at this point, And I'm not even sure I'm on board with those anymore. Yeah. It's also cracking me up that Sugar and Spice thought that they were doing like a bit, like that they had to be like, oh, we love it. And then, <laughs> but they kept all of it in. It's yeah. so good. Yes. It's so good. And then like cutting each other off. Constantly. <laughs> I love it. It's really funny. It's really funny. So salute and to the outfits, Delta. By oh, the way. Right. Mm-hmm. So good. Yes. And they did the transition videos on TikTok as well. Like mm-hmm. the jumping into the clothes. Did you see Squishmallow is doing Sugar and Spice? No. I don't know if that's sponsored, but um, Squishmallow. Like the drag? It's like, uh, there's like, you know what a Squishmallow is, yeah. right? Yeah. So they're making a pair and it's sugar and spice. And one is like cute and like pink and, you know, and then they're both cute, but like themed. But it's not directly inspired by. It should, I think. Oh, well, I mean, oh. I But it's think not their it actual is. face. No. Oh, okay. It's oh, like a cute. sugar and spice Squishmallow. Oh. One's a devil and one's like a little like cream puff. Oh, it's cute. And I'm like, hmm. Inspired, perhaps. I think so. They should definitely at least go buy those and do something fun with it. A skit yeah. or something. Well, impacting the culture. Yeah. Well. Honestly. There you go. They need a little mayonnaise one. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar, <laughs> spice, and ranch. mayonnaise. <gasps> okay. Oh, shit. Fuck. Fuck. When Fuck we launch our condiment Don't. plushie line. Um, oh, my God. Sugar, spice, which aren't condiments, but we're going on with that. Seemingly ranch, mayonnaise. I guess that's it. I got a Squishmallow the other day. Oh. I'm embarrassed. To it. Actually, no, I don't care. I almost bought a cute fluffy thing today, actually, that was in the window at the Japanese bookstore, but I didn't. I took a picture of it, though. It's cute. Yeah. I'm a sucker for like a, a cute little plump plushy I toy. I got one with my sister when we were at a rest stop on our way to Maine. Oh. I was like, oh my God, these are so cute. And so then my mom wanted to get them. So I'm like, sure. So I got a little turtle. Oh, that's cute. It's it's a little one. It's not like the big. Yeah. Do you follow the um the turtle on TikTok? No. Is it molting? Uh, n- uh, no, he is not molting. He's 22 years old. I guess he's going to live to be like 150 or something like that. Yeah, they last a long time. Yeah. She feeds him like giant, like a bunch of food and takes him on walks. And he's it's quite big. He's like... He's huge. What's his, what's his name? Oh, my God. I'm blanking. Wow. Anyway, it's a famous TikTok turtle. He's massive. A tortoise. I don't know. I watch the guys that take the barnacles off the crabs and let them free. The lobsters? No crabs. Like, Sebastian. Oh, I watch this lobster guy who does that. And then he gives them uh, a fish in their claw and throws them back out. Oh, basically the same thing. Just yeah. different animals. I'm learning a lot about the lobster industry. And how uh, it's very sustainable, actually. Oh. Yeah. If they see it's a female with eggs, they clip the tail and they throw it back in. And it cannot be caught for ever for um, eating because it's helping to replenish the population. Why do they cut its tail off? That's so mean. No, they don't cut the tail off. They put a little notch so that when the fishermen catch it again, they go, oh, this has been designated as a do not sell. Oh. So it gets tossed back in with a fish in its hand. Gotcha. This is, we've sustainability i'm gonna do that only. i'm gonna clip myself and say do not drag on twitter 
<laughs> throw it back online. Throw it back. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We've really covered it all here. There was something else I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> lastly, on the Sugar and Spice interview, I want to say I loved how Delta praised what they do yeah. online. Oh, yeah. And she went on that like little rant about like how it's a new generation. We can learn from you and like really praised what they've yeah. done. Mm-hmm. And I, it's a very, very, very entertaining, but also like they get a little deep at certain moments. Mm-hmm. It was good. Just like ours. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's also up on YouTube, by the way. If you want to watch the interview, our video interview is up on That's right. our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube, we have an Instagram, and we also have a Patreon. If you would like to support the podcast directly over on patreon.com slash legends which just got a makeover, Patreon rebranded, so you're going to see an icon switch. Yes. And the content should be easier to find, yeah. but inside the app. For $5 a month or $10 a month, you can support the pod, get bonus content, join our icon chat, and every week after the main episode, there is an after show. Yes, and you can always join us on the Discord, and if you'd like to join the Discord but don't know how, check out the Patreon, and if you still have questions, you can DM us, and then we send you the little how-to, and then everyone figures it out. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's get into some new bops of the week. Some new, some old, some semi-old. Yeah, we do have one song that we need to shout out that we haven't shouted out yet. Yeah, I feel like I thought I did, and I don't think I did. I don't think we did. We Maybe. might have been off the week it came out. Oh, I think we were. Yeah, because it's it's new. Yes, but it didn't come out this week. Yeah, I was I was surprised that we didn't, but then I think that's why. Yeah, because I was looking at the playlist. We also have a playlist. We do have a Legends way. Only weekly playlist now available. And I was like, I don't think I added it yet. Okay, well, but we are this week. Yes, because it's all over the place. Miss Tate, Tate McRae, greedy. This song, which is very 2000s Timbaland-style vibes, throwback, has blown up exponentially thanks to, what else, TikTok. And I think it's like a sped-up version. Yeah. And uh, Tube Girl has also made this. I don't know what Tube Girl is. It's the girl who like did this like fast recording of herself, selfie-style, in a crowded tube, which is the subway in, in London. And... Oh, that's what... Oh. Yes, you were picturing an actual tube. Yeah, I was like, what am I missing here? Yeah, I think a lot of people who don't speak British. Got it. Okay, now it makes sense. So she, people can be very strange. I just, this whole thing about, she just did like a fast motion selfie video in the tube. And people were like, wow, she's so brave and bold to do that in public. Everyone was like enamored. Kind of true. And then somebody took a video of her doing it at a fashion show and she's just like and like celebrities are walking by her and she's just like erratically doing it it definitely loses its luster from afar but she's the one at the fashion show not me so fact she, she's did a lot for a little i mean yeah. at first i'm like oh this is so dystopian like we live our lives on the cell phone like everything is fake and blah 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 but then i'm like that only takes really 15 seconds of your life and then she goes back to mingling with the celebrities so who cares like, yes, you do that weird moment for 15 seconds in front of strangers. She's not afraid to be seen. She is not afraid to be perceived. And they say that is the key to success, is you have to be unafraid to be seen. Well, that is why I will never be successful. Anyway. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm on the right track, baby. Um, I've seen your YouTube videos. Yeah, not, not so afraid to be seen. Literally, you can never <laughs> hear that one Ariana song ever again after yeah. that video. Anyway, say Otto Walla, <laughs> not sponsor. If you yeah. know, you know. So shout out to Tate. Greedy is a bop. And it's, I think it's going to be her highest charting song in the UK since the one that blew up during the pandemic. Now I'm forgetting the name. So yeah, Slime. go off. And I don't know if you've seen the video at all, but like she is a dancer and she's giving you pop dancing. Oh, I haven't seen the video yet. She first and foremost, I would say she is a dancer. And so she does intense choreo which we have to stand speaking of anthems we knew this was coming league of legends weekly not weekly world yearly world anthem we had kda obviously Mm -hmm. our queens they will never ever do as good as that no um we had some like edm maybe i forget what the other ones were some edm guys yeah wasn't it porter robinson oh yes porter robinson 
And this year we have the legendary newcomers in K-pop, New Jeans with Gods. And this is where I've realized League of Legends has its own sound. Yeah. Like, I was talking with Jake. He said it's very Imagine Dragons. Oh, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, that's, yes, there's a sound to it. It's like cinematic. Yes. And yeah, it's not Kavant. No, it is straight culture. But it's epic. But it is epic. Sounding. Yeah. The first time you hear it, you might not get it. You need to hear it for another time and it'll click for you. It doesn't sound like New Jeans at all. No. It's very much in the vein of KDA, Imagine Dragons, like... um a triumphant, like, I'm about to win. Boss battle. Like, yeah. But it's called Gods, and it, it gets you pumped up. It's good oh, for gods. the gym or, you know, um, pumping yourself up before doing something courageous, like going out to get Duncan or something. So My go-to song for that is Conceited by Remy Ma. Mine is Single Again by Trina. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when she had just gotten out of jail. And she went to the Spin Media offices. It was like one of her first things she did. And everyone was like so panicked. That was a crazy time. That yeah. was like a decade ago. Wild. Yeah. That should be the league theme next year. Yeah, it should Just be. Misfortune. Performing <laughs> conceited. Yeah. And she's ulting with her tits out. Mm-hmm. If you get it, you get it. Then I want to give some quick shout outs to Hannah Diamond, who has a new album out called Picture Perfect. She is of the PC Music Collective. And she's been making blippy blops and bops and bangers for over i feel like a decade and so this is her second album she had a bit of a viral moment involving who else but zara larson recently because and i'm sorry but this was she released a song called poster girl with album artwork that was nearly identical to zara's album art for her album called poster girl oh really and it was (sighs) oh yeah. And the funny. It's very similar. Shout out to Poster Girl by Backstreet Boys, though. Fun love with a posting girl. <laughs> yeah. So that was an awkward moment. And then ultimately, Zara, Zara at first was like, she retweeted the cover and she's like, wow, she really won the IDGAF for, wars for that. But then Hannah did this long thing about how it wasn't a copy and she's always been like hyper visual like that. And then Zara checked with her photographers and thinks that her photographers were inspired by Hannah. So they all just kind of laid down their weapons but a bit a bit on the nose for having the same title too yeah it's like pretty crazy anyway album is really cool if you like the j-pop group perfume there's kind of vibes of that in a little bit it's pico pop kind of city pop vibe but also it's very pc music and if you know what that is like that general movement of music sounds like that charlie xcx all of that so in that collective so shout out to that then this next one is my most played of the week by far, especially with the video. And it's like, I feel inappropriate because between the death hoax, which thankfully turned out to be false, and the fact that she's 16 and she'd come out with allegations against her father, like abusing her and her brother, it all feels very dark and twisted and uncomfortable. She she rose to fame as like this viral sensation rapper, I think, like when she was 13, no, I don't know, like really young. It's all kind of twisted and weird. And she came back to the internet after five years or something with this song, Sucker for Green. And I'm so sorry, but I just, I cannot stop listening to it. And her voice kind of gives me like detached. I'd rather be doing something else. Cassie vibes a little bit. Ooh, uh, and oh, Cassie was so fun. And it's, it's, that's what it gives me. And I'm just like, I love I when a pop star us. sounds like she you know, has a tan appointment in an hour and she has to just get this song done real fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's casual Kavan. This is kind of giving me like my Addison of the year almost of, of the, you know, outsider of pop doing a pop song. So sucker for green, unfortunately. I don't know what it means for the world, but it's here. And I hope she's doing well. It sounds like a crazy situation. I have two quick songs that I would like to shout out. First one is by Joel Corey, Hey DJ which was a shocker because I was like listening to this and I'm like, oh my God, Bob, who did this? And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But then my favorite song of the week, Dom Dalla, Saving Up, which has been played in his like sets for a while mm-hmm. and is finally out. Disco Dom Dalla is here. Bop. This is your man. It's an anthem. <laughs> Get your fucking tits out. And I have a theory. Did you see what Jesse Ware said about going techno? 
Yes. If everyone would look back at everything I've been saying, praying, preaching, praying, saying, I'm mm-hmm. predicting it right now. Jesse Ware is going to come back and she's going to work with one of the two, Dom Dollar or John Summit. Put it down right now. I feel like it's going to happen because techno is coming back mainstream. I don't think that's a far off nope. prediction. I think it's possible. He's going to get one of the girlies soon. Yeah. It's going to be like Nelly Furtado and then someone else. For a Dom Dollar feature? Yeah. What if Dula Peep works with him? Oh, I could see that. But yeah, if you like Free Yourself by Jesse Ware with a little more of like a punch mm. and a faster BPM, you would like the song. <laughs> you're, like, oh, you're like, oh. Okay, I'm looking that one up. <laughs> it's a fucking bop. Whatever. It is. Well, and you can listen to all these bops on our playlist that gets updated every week. Sure can. A bit of a light New Music Friday. Thank God. But there's there are still a little... Some more th- coming that we'll discuss. There is so much more. The party is not over. Nope. We're going to be giving you guys Christmas vibes. In the after show, we've got a lot to talk about. We sure do. And Fifth Harmony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, Brooke, and Chris. Everyone's sold. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, the conversation continues over in the after show. Mm-hmm. But until next time. We will. See you. Soon.